go back to dyeing of synthetic fibers with synthetic dyes because we have to strike a balance between learning about synthetic dyes and natural dyes and because in the industry it is necessary for uh, information to be given to the industry for dyeing natural as well as synthetic fabric with the use of natural or synthetic dyes. So, today's lecture is dedicated to the fact that how do we do dyeing of polyamide fibers in industry and therefore, we will try to because these fibers are compositionally very different from the fibers that we have been talking about in the case of natural dyeing that is the natural fibers the cotton, silk and wool. So, the cotton is cellulosic fiber whereas, cotton and wool are proteinaceous fiber. So, their dyeing uh, methodology, their dyeing uh, system and their dyeing applications are completely different from the dyeing procedures application dye uptake of the synthetic fibers and polyamide is one of the very prominent synthetic fiber which is uh, very popularly used by the consumers. So, trying to look at a polyamide structure, this is the structure of polyamide where 1 6 diamino hexane is condensed with adipic acid and the amide linkages that are formed between the a uh, the molecule that is uh, diamino compound and the acid by the loss of water molecule is what is uh, actually in the simple condensation product which is called nylon or polyamide. Polyamide nylon is one of the representative uh, examples is a polyamide, it is a condensation polymer. The formation of a polyamide is same as the synthesis of a simple amide. So, mainly it has the CONH2 group in subsequent orders. One prominent difference is that both the amine and the acid monomer units each have two functional groups one on each side of the molecule. In this polymer the repeating units are identical. Nylon is made out from 1, 6 diamino hexane and adipic acid by the elimination of water molecule that is we saw that H from the amine and OH from the acid have been shown that they are removed and that is a simple representative A and B and A and B go on linking to each other that is the structural detail of the polyamide. Nylon 66 was discovered in 1931 by Wallace Cruthers at DuPont. It was the first fully synthetic fiber produced, it was introduced to women in nylon stockings in 1939 with huge success. During World War II, nylon production was used to make parachutes and other items needed by the military. P nylon is very similar in structure to the protein amides in the silk and wool as shown earlier, but it is far more stronger, more durable, more chemically inert and cheaper to produce as compared to the natural fiber. And that was what made the polyamide or the nylon so popular in the consumer market because of these properties that it has, it is far more stronger, more durable, chemically more inert and cheaper to produce. So, what more can one ask? Natural fibers have a little limitation, they are not so durable, they have, uh, they are not so strong and they are not chemically inert. They are, they get uh, affected by very acidic or very basic condition and so on and so forth because of the tenderness. But 
this nylon 66 seems to be a very ideally suited material for consumers. Polyamide fibers, it is a nylon fiber we generally know. It consists of multiples of 6 carbon chain in which half the end of the carbon being converted to carbonyl and the other half into the amino nitrogen. It is thermoplastic, is sensitive to heat and tension applied in various texturing processes. So, the total temperature tension history of yarn determines the degree of orientation in textured yarns. So, you see that it has all very good qualities for the from the stability point of view. It is a thermoplastic material, it is sensitive to heat, so it can be textured. Many designs can be introduce and this design would depend on the total temperature and the way the yarn has been tensed to see the degree of orientation in the textured yarn. When we come to uh, dyeing of this very unique material, unique in the sense that it has all the qualities, acid metal complexes disperse reactive and disperse dyes are the important classes of dyes used in dyeing of nylon. Now, let me tell you that natural dyes do not come into the picture at all when we talk about nylon dyeing because the dye uptake phenomena is completely different in this case. And as we go along, you will, uh, you will be able to see why this acid dye or metal complexes or dispersed dyes are the only classes of dyes that are used for polyamide fiber dyeing and why natural dye fails because we, there is no mention of any modern dye here and for the simple reason that natural dyes are all modern dyes. Therefore, they do not they are not compatible that is the, the only word that I can use that natural dye here has no uh, way to uh, be used in polyamide dyeing. So, we have to now concentrate on the dyes that can be used that is because we are trying to learn about polyamide fiber dyeing, acid dyes, metal complexes, disperse reactive dyes and disperse dyes are the only important class of dyes that can be used for nylon dyeing. Different types of bonds are formed between fiber and dyes. The level dyeing characteristic of dyes and fastness properties of final dyeing depends on migration behavior of the dye, stability of bond between the dye and the fiber and diffusion characteristic of dye properties as well as fiber history. So, you see these are the three main criteria based on which the fiber will actually take or reject the dye. First is that how easily the dye molecule is migrating. So, it is migrating behavior. How good is the stability of the bond that is forming between the fiber and the dye? Because then only the dye adherence will take place. And the third part is the diffusion characteristic how easily the dye can penetrate or diffuse into the fiber and what is the rate of the diffusion. Whether it is good or bad would decide whether the dye will be taken up by the nylon fiber or rejected and that is where the natural dyes actually failed. The dye diffusion was very poor. So, the process of dyeing polyamide fiber dyeing basically adopts ad uh, adsorption. So, it is with the help of adsorption on the fabric surface. Dye should be dissolved in water at particular temperature and then dye molecules tend to leave the aqueous phase and get adsorbed on fi uh, fiber surface. So, you see that it is just a function of the surface adsorption, adsorption always takes on the surface. So, first thing that must happen is the adsorption of the dye. 
The adsorption proceed at particular rate depending on the concentration of the dye bath, the temperature of the dye bath and the presence of auxiliaries either retarding or, or exhausting agents. We had if you recall similar retarding and uh, exhausting agents were used in the case of polyester dyeing which we learned a couple of lectures back. So, and there also the first step was the uh, um, breaking of the dye aggregates that is the solvation. The second step was adsorption and here the dye adsorption is the first step and then the dye migration and so on and so forth. So, in the absence of auxiliaries the initial rate of adsorption is very high. As the concentration of the dye on the fiber surface builds up by high rate of adsorption, the rate of desorption goes on increasing due to equilibrium process. So, here again there is a forward reaction where the dye is actually being adsorbed and there is a desorption reaction happening simultaneously after some time when the concentration of the dye in the fabric has increased enough. The process in which dye adsorbed tends to leave the fiber and enter the aqueous phase is called stripping or desorption. So, these two processes which are actually uh, going in opposite direction one is the dye entrance and the other one is the dye stripping or the desorption are taking place simultaneously and because of that there is an equilibrium established and therefore, it is important to see that this equilibrium moves in the forward direction rather than in the backward direction. Otherwise, all the dye that has been taken up by the fiber will be uh, you know desorbed or stripped off by the fiber. So, at dynamic equilibrium both rates become equal and dye adherence to the fiber then takes place. So, if that does not happen the rate of forward reaction will not go further beyond and therefore, at this you know situation when there is enough amount of dye in the um, concentration within the fiber within the fiber not adsorbed first it is adsorbed then it moves inside and that is where when it is moving inside it is also moving outside. So, there is a dynamic equilibrium and at that point the dye adherence starts taking place and the dye starts chemically reacting with the fiber. Example of you know if we try to you know take a deeper look at the dyeing process consider a specific case of dyeing polyamide fibers with an acid dye. Suppose if we take an acid dye how will that behave in this situation initially the amino groups at molecular chain ends get protonated positive sites are being in the fiber created as a result after which anions of the acid dye is attracted and retained in the vicinity of the positive sites to maintain electrical neutrality. These ions are held by different bonds as well as by electrostatic van der Waals and hydrogen bonding which are all three of them are weak bonds, but nevertheless if there are hundreds of these weak bond that itself will strengthen. The bigger the size of the dye anion also slow desorption will occur. As a result their desorption becomes more difficult and dye gets adhered on nylon. So, the whole process is suppose if there is an acid dye the first thing that happens in the system is that the amino end of the nylon gets protonated. Once that is protonated the it creates a positive site in the fiber and to which the anion of the acid that is the COO minus group or the sulfonic acid SO3 minus group anion will then go and uh, very close to that. Now, here is a positive charge, here is a negative charge. So, because of the uh, you know electrostatic attraction they will be there. 
So, that will also create a electrical neutrality, otherwise the system will be either acidic or basic. These ions are held by different bonds such as van der Waals forces, electrostatic forces and hydrogen bonding. So, therefore, the, this desorption process is very facile. Now, when we try to look at the choice of dyes, the polyamide fiber can be dyed with dispersed dyes, acid dyes and certain direct dyes also. There are a few factors which influence the dye stuff choice that is leveling or coverage of differences between degree of orientation and variation in end uh, amino group content. Wash fastness and light fastness, any dye any dyeing process will be only considered worthwhile if the wash fastness and light fastness are good for the dyed fabric. Otherwise, the process fails and that is why natural dye failed because it did not have a good dye adherence. As a result, the dye washed off. So, the fabric remained faded and it did not take up the dye. But if we have to look at the dyeing of polyamide fiber, we have to keep a few points very clearly in mind that the, the factors that actually if, uh, uh, influence the dye stuff choice should be that which type of dye is structurally compatible with the structure of the nylon dye. We just now learnt that if we take an example of the acid dye, the first thing that happens is the protonation of the amino group. Because there is an anion and the cation in the acid dye, the anionic part goes and sits near the protonated end of the nylon. Now, because they are in close vicinity, the, the dye molecule starts migrating and the desorption has to be slower in order for the dye to retain in the fabric. Then only the dye adherence and the electrostatic forces and the electrical neutrality and the van der Waal forces and the hydrogen bonding all will take place. If the dye does not remain there, if it runs out, if it strips off, then where will be the possibility for any kind of van der Waal forces or hydrogen bonding? So, that is why the main factor that influences the dye stuff choice is the leveling or coverage of differences between degree of orientation and variation in the end amino group content. And that is what because that is the starting point. So, that is what uh, makes a lot of difference. What are the factors that are responsible for the choice of the dye? Dispersed dye cover barre effectively and fair light fastness, but have poor washness, wash fastness. Dispersed reactive dyes offer both coverage and wash fastness. Coverage is also termed as barre. That means, how much portion of the surface of the fiber has been affected by the dye, presence of the dye. So, that is referred as barre or B A double -R, R E. So, if we look at simple dispersed dyes, they have good light fastness, but poor washing fastness and they have somewhat you know medium type of coverage possibility. Whereas, dispersed reactive dyes have both coverage, good coverage and good uh, wash fastness. Metal complex dyes have highest wash fastness and light fastness. So, these metal complex dyes which are synthetic dyes, we are talking only in terms of synthetic dyes. This category of dispersed dyes, dispersed reactive dyes, metal complex dyes and acid and direct dyes are only categories of synthetic dyes. We are not talking natural dyes because natural dyes have been rejected in the case of polyamide uh, uh, dyeing. So, coming back to metal complex dyes, they have highest wash and light fastness, whereas acid and direct uh, dyes gave good barre coverage, 
and moderate light and wash fastness. So, one has to now again it is all structure related. You have understood one thing that structures play a very big role and I gave you an example with the help of an acid dye example that how this is all possible because of the structural detail of a dye because we know the structural detail of the nylon. There is an end group which is amino group, there is another end group which is a carboxylic group and all the amide linkages. Amide linkages in between help in all those uh, small small different types of uh, electrostatic attraction or van der Waals forces or hydrogen bonding and all that to you know bring the dye and the fabric together. But the initial bringing up is all related to the structure of the dye and to the structure of the polyamide. So, these are the various fact uh, I mean each dye has its own coverage uh, possibilities, each dye has its own reactivity and the reactivity related to its being adhering. Adhering is only through these physical methods that is the hydrogen bondings and so on. So, because these are of weak nature, but they are in huge number. Therefore, the dye is sitting there because of the electrostatic attraction and these dispersed dyes or dispersed reactive dyes have different kind of compatibility because of their difference in structure. So, whether it is metal complex dyes, whether it is dispersed dyes, whether it is dispersed reactive dyes, whether it is acid dyes or whether it is direct dyes, all have different structures. Therefore, all have different kind of reactivity with the polyamide fiber. Bariness, let us learn this new term a little more in detail. The dyeing of polyamide fabric is often accompanied by bariness or leveling. This appears to be the result of successive dyeing of lightly and heavily colored yarns apparently because different yarns have not taken up the same quantity of dye in the dye bath. Chemical bariness has two origins, firstly adsorption bariness is caused by variation in the amine end groups of the fiber and secondly kinetic bariness is caused by the differences in the orientation within the polymer structure of the fiber. So, you see that even the leveling or the coverage or the equalness of the dye uptake at various position of the fiber would depend on the fact that how is this dye vis a vis what is the structure of the nylon and the chemical bariness has two main origins that is one is caused where is the amino group. Uh, is it and how is it located and the second one is that the orientation of these molecules and the polymer structure of the fiber. How is it? If the yarn is twisted, the dyeing will be uneven because the amide groups are now inward outward. So, that is what is causing the uh, non you know evenness or non leveling of the coverage area of the surface. So, therefore, because this is not like chemical dyeing that there is a direct bond formation covalent bond or coordinate bond formation with the metal and the fiber and this and that it is very different. And because of this difference and only physical adsorption bringing the dye aggregate closer to the fabric as far as possible, the protonation of the fabric and so on causes this dye to come closeness. Factors responsible for bariness, optical differences, chemical and physical differences in the fiber molecule. Bariness is also influenced by the type of dye used and its molecular structure or molecular size. If the type of bariness can be identified, it may, it may be possible to reduce it by careful dye selection. So, now if we know 
that a particular dye say for example natural dye is not uh, having a good coverage or leveling we will not use it so we will reject that dye but among the direct dye acid dye metal complex dye dispersed reactive dye and dispersed dye we will choose that particular type of dye which will have evenness or bariness which is uh, causing even dye uptake and this can be figured out by optical difference because one place the dye will be taken up largely more dye aggregate will be there. So, even the dye choice molecular size of the dye if the molecule is too large again the you know diffusion will be a problem. So, all this can control the bariness. Leveling effect, leveling effects are basically surfactant, they form water soluble complexes with dye to give better level on material. Many types of leveling agents used for bar coverage, bar coverage of the polyamide fibers are anionic agents, cationic agents and non-ionic agents. Anionic leveling agents are generally the best for coverage for barre on acid dyes, anionic and non-anionic mixtures are best for acid milling dyes and cationic agents are beneficial for metal complexes dyes. So, now in order to remove this problem of barre coverage, there are leveling agents and these leveling agents are nothing but surfactants. And the role of surfactant is that they try to dissolve the dye as good or as uh, nicely as possible so that there is a better level of dye infusion or diffusion. Main types of leveling agents are you know they can be anionic agents, cationic agents or non-ionic agents and anionic agents are best meant for acid dyes. So, if we use acid dyes in place along with anionic leveling agents, it, it is a best combination because that starts promoting or uh, protonating the amino group of the nylon 66. Similarly, cationic agents are good for metal complexes because they start initiating the reaction by protonation. Dispersed dyes for polyamide fiber. This class of dyes best suited for amide, polyamide fiber has very good coverage of bariness, no blocking effect, simple drying procedure, good light and wash fastness, self leveling properties. Dispersed dyes bound to fiber by hydrogen bonding at NHCO grouping of the molecule and working in aqueous dye bath permit them to migrate and level out. So, since dispersed dyes seem to be the best compatible choice for polyamide fiber, there is very good coverage of the bariness. The, there are no blocks, so the, uh, the dye aggregates do not form. The migration of the dye takes in a very facile manner. And the procedure of dyeing is also very simplified and most so much and most importantly the wash fastness and the light fastness is very good. Because for every kind of dyeing procedure be it natural dyeing with on natural fibers or be it synthetic dyeing with synthetic dyes on synthetic fibers both need one basic criteria that the dyed fabric should have good fastness property, light and washing fastness. These are the two main basic criteria for a dyed fabric to be ascertained as a good dyed fabric only on these two parameters one can judge them. So, and the self uh, leveling property of the dye will also be an added advantage because it will not create any bariness 
and therefore this is possible that these these dispersed dyes are actually hydrogen bonded only by these weak bonding but nevertheless because there are huge number of hydrogen bonding therefore it is a good option to hold up the dye at their situation dyeing of nylon on jigger let's now look at what is the machine that can be used for dyeing of nylon jigger having rollers is used for dyeing woven fiber like nylon nylon is a hydrophobic is hydrophobic in nature its imbibed dye liquor is very small this liquor is trapped between fabric and rotation of the rolls pressure and friction exerted by batch on fabric make it penetrate into the fabric and dye it extent of dyeing depends uh, temperature depends on temperature as well the temperature of fabric on rollers should be maintained as close as dye liquor so if the temperature is kept at a little high and because they are moving in the roller it is possible to use jigger for nylon dyeing but in general nylon is hydrophobic in nature so that is it is not water loving so therefore the dye liquor that goes into the fabric by the mode of adsorption is very small but this liquor that goes liquor means dye solution which goes gets trapped between the fiber and the rotation and therefore it remains there for some time in close proximity with the fabric and that is what creates you know to for it to get adsorbed and initially uh, once the adsorption takes place it starts diffusing inwardly to get into the core critical points on jigger dyeing the major problems that one actually comes across while dyeing on nylon although it is possible to dye on uh, jigger uh, irregular dyeing called tailing side to center color variation called listing length wise color variation called ending temperature control from side to side and end to end of the roll tension control from end to end constant speed control from end to end prevention of creases prevention of air so these are the major problem that one figures out because jiggers are open jiggers and there therefore there is irregular dyeing what happens from the side the dyes will penetrate and towards the center there will be lesser amount of dye that would reach therefore side to center color will show a variation and this is called listing length wise also the color variation will be there initially the color taken up will be larger and then it will be lesser and lesser so that is called ending temperature control from side to side because whatever be the temperature of the liquor and whatever be the temperature of the roller but there is always a variation because there is air in between and therefore prevention of air should be there which is causing the difference in temperature when the temperatures are similar the dye uptake will be similar but that doesn't happen in an open system the sides are more uh, 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 you know accessible to air and in the center there is more of the dye solution and so on and so forth after treatments are required for any dyeing you saw that we also took care of the dye fixing in the case of natural dyeing similarly the wet fastness of acid dye on nylon can be considerably increased by an after treatment involving treatment with 20% tannic acid with uh, uh, with, uh, with the weight of the fabric or and 4% formic acid with the weight of the fabric at 95 degrees for 30 minutes and treat or we can even do treatment with 1% weight of the fabric with tartar emetic that is potassium antimonial tartrate at 90 degrees for 15 minutes so these are the two treatments which can help the polyamide nylon to keep the or retain the dye so either we use a tannic acid treatment 
of 20 percent with 4 percent formic acid combination at 95 degrees for 30 minutes or a treatment with 1 percent with tartar emetic which is potassium antimonial tartrate at 90 degrees for 15 minutes. So, at very high temperature these treatments after treatments are required in order to retain the dye that has diffused into the nylon fabric, so that they do not run off after washing. So, if we have to conclude, we will say dyeing of polyamide fiber is governed by the dyeing time, the dyeing concentration, the nature of the dye, the type of the dye, nature of leveling agent employed, temperature of the dyeing bath, coverage of bariness and pH of the dye bath. You see, unless and until these factors that is the dye, dyeing time, you know it is not a fast process, adsorption, diffusion, retention and then you know to break this equilibrium all requires its time consuming and therefore, the dyeing time is very important in the case of polyamide fibers. Similarly, dye concentrations, you know if we have very weak dye solution, it will be uh, uh, causing very light coloration to the nylon fiber. Why? Because as it is, it is hydrophobic, dyes are water soluble. How to let this little dye get into the fabric and what kind of coloration will it provide? So, dye concentration must be very high. Then type of dye, because we saw that there were several options, dispersed dyes, dispersed reactive dyes, acid dyes, metal complex dyes, direct dyes, so or oh, and acid dyes. So, these many from these many options, what is the best category of dye? that should be used and we saw that dispersed dye, dispersed reactive dyes are the best because they provide good wash fastness, good light fastness, they have good uh, body coverage, they have good uh, you know um, uh, fast reaction time and they are withheld uh, by the hydrogen bonding, so that you know they do not run off. There is a kind of a a weak bonding, but still nevertheless they are held the dye molecule and the fiber have a kind of a hydrogen bonding and that is possible because of the carbonyl and the NH2 group that are present in the amide linkages of the nylon fiber. So, that is uh, the type of dye is very important. Again the nature of leveling agent employed because it is the leveling agent which is the surfactant which actually is, you know keeps them together. If this uh, leveling reagent does not participate then the dye dissolution will be a problem, the uh, you know the initial uh, protonation of the amino group in the case of acid dyes and so on and so forth will not take place and the bariness will uh, enhance. So, therefore, it keeps the bariness or the coverage of the bariness uh, lower. Nature of leveling agent is therefore very important whether it is anionic, cationic, which, which dye is being used. First thing is the choice of dye and accordingly the choice of the leveling agent will be followed by that. Then the temperature of the dye bath also has a very big impact. So, therefore, the pH and uh, covering of bariness in the case of polyamide are very important factors. So, today we finish the chapter on dyeing with polyamides and the synthetic dyes were used. Mm -hmm.